Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you're tuning in for, to me from, whether that's here in the US or I know I have some UK viewers. It's so glad to see you guys in the comments popping in. Vicky, Jennifer, love seeing all you guys. Everyone watching the replay, be sure to jump into the comments as well because I keep up with you even after the show. If you're new around here, welcome. I'm your host, Ed Troxel, and I am the tech expert. I help you with tech and business. I love uh, being able to help you strategize and get things done and overcome your tech challenges. You can find out all about me and the things that I offer at edtroxel.com. Link will be in the comments afterwards. And be sure to jump on the email list. That's free, and you can get a guide uh, plus a little coaching there as well. So be sure to do that if you're not already on the list. How this show works is we are a business talk show. We talk about business, tech, and the user experience. And we go live uh, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also catch the replay, of course. And those who are on my email list actually get all of these episodes, including more um, in my weekly newsletter, which goes out every Friday. So if you're not on the list, be sure to get on there. And that is over at edtroxel.com. Now, the way that this show will work, if you're new around here, is I really want you to engage in the comments, even if you're watching the replay. We're going to do some random news here up front. The thing about random news is that it's fun, and it also is teaching moments a lot of the times. Um, sometimes it's just good fun, but we like to teach throughout um, different things that come up in the news. And then we may or may not have a quick commercial break. Today we won't. We'll just jump right into the content which is going to be the three things that you need to be avoiding when you are going live. Now, going live can mean Facebook, it can mean Periscope, it can mean Instagram. Wherever you're at, it doesn't matter. If you're going to go live, you want to pay attention to these three things and you want to avoid them. So we'll get into that here shortly and be sure to tag your friends and share this out. Um, and just like uh, Chrissy and Leticia and everyone else, welcome, jumping into the comments, love that. Be sure to connect with each other, not only me, but each other, and um, let's, let's get into it. So for random news, how many of you guys are beer drinkers? I know I have a few people that follow that are into um, craft beers, so I am not, but... But, I know that's probably heartbreaking for some of you who are very hardcore beer drinkers, um, but check this out. I have some sad news for you guys. I know, I know, some sad news. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Because of global warming, it's going to be threatening your beer supply. Can you believe this? Like, literally, global warming is now affecting your beer supply. So I hope this is a huge wake-up call for you, <laughs> if nothing else has happened. Um, but that is a really interesting that it's affecting the beer. And check this out. This article even talks about how um, Ireland is going to be affected, and their price increases can be as much as 338% by 2099. Now, of course, 2099 sounds like it's a long ways away, but every day counts and it's going to be affecting everyone. So it's really interesting to see um, that going on with the beer, especially because in my area, um, the North Bay of California, a wine country, there's been a huge like pop-up of breweries everywhere. So it's really interesting to see this article pop up now to see that the beer is going to get more expensive and it's going to be uh, starting to get harder to find. So we'll see We'll see how that impacts everyone. Now, Uber. We've talked about Uber before. Uber's in the news again. And I don't know, do you know why Uber's in the news? It's actually a good thing Uber's in the news. And it's really smart that Uber's in the news. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. But I'm just going to want you to think about from a business standpoint and just how this can work in your favor. So let me go ahead and share my screen again with you. And we're going to switch over to our Uber screen. Oops, let me get on the right screen. There we are. Um, so Uber is actually going to allow free rides to the polls come election day, which November 6th is election day. And here's the cool thing. Not only are they going to share, give you free rides, but... Check this out. Uber is making it so that they will have 
an option within the app when you open it that says get to the polls and then it will allow you to choose your closest polling station. You guys, this is super smart. Super smart. Like, do you see that they are not only allowing free rides, but they're also taking it one step further and they're making it convenient for their users. That's user experience, also known as UX. They're allowing their users who already have their devices, who already have the app installed, who already have an account with Uber, to simply open up the Uber app, tap on this get to the polls, and boom, find where they need to go and go for free. You can't get that anywhere else, right? It can't get any easier. Like, that, it, do you see how crazy that, tell me in the comments, even if you're watching the replay, do you see how awesome that is? Whether or not you love Uber or not, that's not the question. The question is, can you see how awesome that is from a business standpoint with your user experience and to provide that seamless integration, right? Vicky says, great marketing. Exactly. It's super cool. And they also have teamed up with hashtag vote together and democracy works to provide this service. So they're doing this with other people involved, right? Teamwork equals success. So it's really neat to do that. Tabitha, Uber up. Exactly. So it's really, really cool. So you want to make sure that when you see things like this pop up in the news, you want to, you know, take a second to kind of fine tune or go through and read between the lines and be like, oh, it's not just offering free rides. Like Uber's literally has this user experience down. You know, we talked about that recently on one of our episodes here about um, upping your sales receipts. If you missed that episode, we have that over on the website. But that one we talked about how you can start using your sales receipts as a marketing tool and really stepping up your game and how Uber actually does a very good job about that. So keep that in mind. And speaking of polls and tech and just everything in general, you know, there's a new app out. And you know how there's that saying, there's an app for that? You know, you come up with a problem and you're like, oh, there's an app for that. Well, there is an app for those who want to make America date again. <laughs> you guys, I can't make this stuff up. So let me go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see that it's not just me. So TechCrunch reported that there's a new app that came out. It's a dating app for um, Trump supporters. Very interesting. Very specific target market, right? Uh, and they're tagline or slogan is make America date again. Very interesting play on words there. Here's the thing. And it's called Donald daters. Another interesting name. And here's the thing though. Again, going back to the user experience on launch day, the app had a little over 1600 users and counting, but they had a security breach and all the data that was supposed to be protected, user data is supposed to be protected, was not. And it was available for everyone to see. So it's just, you know, uh, things happen with technology. Um, you want to make sure that when you create anything, whether, and this is a hot topic because we've seen it with Facebook, we've seen it with um, so many other companies as well in the news. When it comes to user data, GDPR, right, with um, email lists and things like that, all of these things keep coming back to the user. You see that connection? The user, which is what we have to remember, that's the person that's our customers. So no matter what we create, we always have to keep them in mind. And we always have to make sure that we are doing our absolute best to protect them, right? That's why when we have people sign up for our email list, they're doing so knowing that we have their best interests at heart and we are not going to take their information and sell it or spam them with other information that they didn't sign up for. Like those are the things that we have to remember. We have to be respectful of everyone who provides information to us because we also want to be having that same respect when we provide information to others. So when it comes to creating 
a dating app or a membership site like many of us are doing these days. We have to keep that in mind and we have to make sure that we're using the right tools and resources to protect them and have those things in place. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, some interesting random news, right? It, it just, it goes to show you there's an app for everything. Uh, you can get very specific for your target market and, and just go from there. So anyway, that's your random news today. Let's jump into today's content. We're going to skip our commercial break because we're just going to go right into our content today, which is the three things you should avoid when going live. So before we jump into that, let me ask you, how many of you guys, even if you're watching the replay, are going live right now? Not literally right now because you're watching me, so you technically can't go live unless you're on a different device, which then it's kind of awkward and we should have just did a Skype call so I could have brought you in on my show and then we would have been side by side. Yeah, we can do that. That's, a, that's called a guest. You can be a guest on the show. But I mean, how many of you guys are going live in general, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, or Periscope? So let me know yes or no, and then on what platform. Vicky's going live. I've been seeing Vicky a lot, which is awesome because if you guys remember, for those who have been around for a while, Vicky actually made her pretty much her debut on our show, right? We brought Vicky on, and from there, we had her watch her replay so that she can realize that she was really, really good at going live, even though she was a little hesitant. And then from there, she's just blossomed, and it's been awesome to see. So we got Vicky, we got Erica saying yes, Jennifer, Letitia, perfect. Carly, perfect. Awesome. So excellent. So you guys are going live. I love this. Now, where are you going live? I see some are saying Facebook, some are on Facebook and Instagram. Do you have a preference? Do you prefer one over the other? Replay viewers, chime in because I'm still going to connect with you afterwards. A lot of you guys are Facebook and Instagram. Okay, cool. I will say for me, I'm mostly Facebook, a little Periscope, and not so much Instagram. I will tell you, I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. Many of you may know that. Uh, and the thing that I personally have issues with for Instagram Live, and I'm going to tell you this because I want you to um, take this with a grain of salt and, and make sure that it you consider this when you are doing anything with your live efforts, okay? So the reason I personally don't go live on Instagram is for me, it just... I want to bring people onto the show and I want to be able to easily repurpose the videos and Instagram's just not there yet for that. Uh, yes, you can bring somebody on to your broadcast. Totally. That's an option, but I don't know about you, but I have seen so many times where people try to do that and Instagram has issues. Either the person can't get on or they're on, but there's no audio, or the audio cuts out, or it just freezes. It's, it's very challenging, which for me, it's not a good user experience, right? And that's what I'm all about, and that's what I try to remind you guys to improve on your user experience as much as possible. So keep that in mind, and then also for repurposing your videos, you have to remember, and maybe you don't even know this, so let me, let me share this with you. With Instagram, when you go live, if you don't immediately save that video after your broadcast, you don't get that back. There's no workarounds. There's no, let me go back to my news feed to get that. No, like there are no way, at least at this point, there's no way for you to be able to get that video and re-download it. So if you just gave out your best live ever on Instagram and you forgot to hit save, well, after 24 hours, it's gone. Unless you do a screen recording that, you know, that's a little tech tip there. If you want to, if you want to get up into the, the techie uh, zone for a minute, you could do a screen recording, but let's just stick to the basics here. And so just keep that in mind. Not saying you shouldn't go in, live on Instagram. If your audience is there, totally show up for them. Show up, deliver, and engage with them over there. Just know that you need to remind yourself to hit that save right after your broadcast so you don't lose that video because you want to make sure to repurpose that. We love that word repurpose around here. So now that we know 
Uh, many of you are on Facebook and Instagram and you're going live. That's awesome. Tell me what topics to cover. Hey, Tammy, welcome. What kind of topics are you guys covering on your live broadcasts? I'm just curious. Why you tell me, I'm going to set up my whiteboard here. I didn't bring my little stand over here, so we're going to use my chair. Um, but tell me, what are you going live about? Like, what are people tuning into you for? As you can see here, you're tuning in for business and tech news and, and to learn, right? That's what we love to do here on Ed Talk TV. And then um, we're going to share a little bit about Facebook and going live. And it doesn't have to just be Facebook. It can be Instagram. It can be Periscope. Anywhere you're going live. But we're going to talk about three things to avoid. As you can hear the dog in the background, too. Super quiet and awkward, I know, huh? Um, don't judge on the... Well, obviously you can judge, but don't judge too hard on my writing skills because I'm the tech guy. I'm not supposed to be writing. I'm supposed to be typing, right? So, um, w three things to avoid. What's one thing? I'm going to ask you before I even share the goods. I need to ask you because the reason I want to know what you think... And you don't have to have three. You don't have to put them in order or anything. I'm just curious. Start shouting them out. Well, type them. You can shout them, but I can't hear you. So type them in the comments. So that way I can see it at least. Um, tell me, what do you think are some things that you get annoyed with when you see Facebook Lives? What are some things that you want people to start avoiding when they go live? I want to know because I ask because I saw this awesome um, conversation earlier this week on Facebook, well, last week on Facebook, and I was going through every single comment, and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm going to tell you what they are, what the, the main ones are, but I'm curious, even if you're watching the replay, let me know. I'm curious what you think some of them are. Like, what do you think, when you're watching a live, what are some things people should be avoiding, like, that just drive you crazy? And I'm going to look in the comments here. Awesome. Cool. You guys are building connections in your groups. Yep. Special offers and new products for going live. You talk about mindset. That's great. That is uh, why you're the tech guy. Yes, exactly, Vicky. Loud music. Loud music as it's distracting. Okay. So let me write a couple of those things in another color over here. Let's see. I want to make sure we'll put them over here. Loud music. Cool. We got loud music. When people wait for others to join in the beginning, so wait for others. Going on and on. Yep. Isn't there a song for that, Tammy? Going on and on. I don't know. We won't. We won't test. We won't go too far off of my tech skills here. Um, going on and on. Perfect. Bad language or <laughs> moaning about things. Yes. So, language. Ignoring your audience. Oh, Chrissy, that's a good one. Yes. Oh, eating. Eating's another good one. So we shouldn't be stuffing our face while we're doing a Facebook Live. It's good to know. Although, because I know I have some health fitness people, trainers and others here in the audience that will be watching this, while eating is on the list, possibly for those who bake or who are doing a cooking show, that would be different, right? We have to make sure that we understand that there's certain situations some of these things may work for you. I mean, if you're doing a cooking show, like, I'll be honest with you guys, some of you have seen my personal profile where I've done Ed in the Kitchen, because it's just fun, and, you know, I try to cook and do stuff healthy. Um, so when I'm doing a live like that, you guys actually got disappointed. You were disappointed because I didn't do the actual taste test on camera. I, would like, walked you all through the, the whole recipe and cooking and everything, and we had a good time, and then all of a sudden... I ended it, and you guys were like, wait, 
we wanted to see the taste test. So depending on the situation, that could be. But I, I know what you mean. Eating like if I'm doing this business presentation right now and eating, uh, you know, I don't know, a muffin or something. I don't know why a muffin and thinking breakfast already. Um, it's not going to work real well, right? Tammy says eating drives me crazy. Uh, Erica, I think the advert of IGTV, which is I repurposed to it. It's, okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. I'm going to kind of mumble a little bit here. Sorry, you guys. I know that's probably the, one of the annoying th parts, but I'm just going to get through the comments real quick because you guys are doing amazing. Ooh, roll call. Everyone joining in the beginning of the live. Yes. Roll call? What, what? Um, so I know I get so excited. It's, it's weird, right? Um, when you are reading comments so often that you can't complete a sentence. <laughs> yes, that is so true, right? Like right now, this, this is probably the longest I spent, I have spent reading the comments. And I try not to read the comment while saying it out loud, you know, like I did a minute ago, because I know that that, that is annoying. Um, but yes, there is a time and a place where reading the comments, it, it throws you off. And so you'd have to just deliver your content. So that's so true. Let's see. Yep. I've been trying to keep mine under five minutes. Tammy. Okay. That's a good one. Yep. Answering your phone. <laughs> Yes. How many of you guys, you end up watching the replay, how many of you have seen people literally answer their phone and have a full-on conversation with the person on the phone while being on the live broadcast with you? I can tell you I've been on that, and that is awkward. That is super awkward. Um, it, put it on silent. Like, let them leave a message. We don't need that, you know? It's very awkward. So, okay, cool. So we have a good list going here. You guys keep putting them in the comments. I'll refer back to them later, even if you're watching the replay. We got a good list here. So now I'm going to share with you the three that came up the most, which some came from your list here. So number one, let's say I'm trying to put them in a, in a good order for you. So we'll start with be prepared. Be prepared. Know what you're going to talk about. So we, I say we, those of you who have been following me and have been tuning into the show, we have a, a specific outline that we like to talk about, right? That's easy for us to remember, for us to share what we're going to talk about. So what is that? Well, it's one topic up to three talking points. That's it. That's all you need. Literally, get a three by five card, write the topic on the front, and on the back have up to three talking points. Why do we say that? Why, why do we want you to be prepared? Why is this important? Right here. Let me know in the comments. While you're doing that, let me move this out of the way. And by doing that, having one topic and up to three talking points, it allows you to show up deliver, no matter if anybody tunes into your show or not, and engage with whoever tunes in both live and on the replay. That's why we do this. So the reason it's important to be prepared is because people are taking time out of their day to watch you and they want to be able to tune in and know, like, what are you talking about? Chrissy, yeah, keep us focused. Exactly. Being prepared is huge, so you want to make sure you're prepared. Number two, this one came up earlier. Don't wait for others. This is probably the number one thing that has come up since this conversation last week is People don't want you to wait on others to show up. If I say I'm going to start at noon and you show up at noon, I need to start at noon. I don't start and say, oh, hey, welcome, Tammy. We're going to wait another five minutes because I want people to show up. What? No. You got to think about class. Think about, okay, how many of you guys have ever sat in a classroom 
It could be for a workshop. It could be for college. It could be high school, elementary school. I don't care. How many of you have sat in a class before? If class starts at 8 a.m., the teacher is going to start because we're going to assume they're on time and everything, and there's no other variables here. The teacher is going to start roll call at 8 a.m. If your bottom is not in that seat at 8 a.m., you're going to be out of luck. You might even get detention, right? Or you might miss something. So it's one of those things like be prepared. When you start, start on time. Don't wait for people to show up. You know, if you have a show like mine, a show format, I should say, like mine, it's a little different and it may or may not annoy some people. It depends. But in my case, mine's a TV show, the way I've made it, right? So I have an intro video and those who have watched can expect that. So they can know that if we start at four, it gives them a few seconds or maybe a minute or so to click over so they can finish whatever they're doing so that they, by 401 or 402, they still can tune into the show and still be ready to go. So just keep that in mind. Now, number three, we talked about this too, is the welcoming of everyone. As I go down the side here. Now, welcoming of everyone, I'll put it like that so you guys can see. The welcoming of everyone. This is a big one, and I can see this being a little um, confusing. Because if you start your show on time, and you jump right into it, and Jennifer shows up, Chrissy shows up, Carly shows up, and, and Erica, it's okay to say hello to a few people who have shown up. That allows you to engage with them, right? But you don't want to sit there and say hello to every single person that pops on to your show for the first five minutes. Nobody, no, we're good. Maybe three to six people. Probably three to four, but I'll give you a little extra. Three to six people, say hello, welcome them, connect with them, explain how your show works, just like you saw with mine here at the beginning. For those who just tuned in, at the beginning, I shared what this show is. It's a business talk show. I tell you what we talk about. I set up the whole game plan. We cover random news. We typically will have a commercial break. And then we go into the content. That way you know, as the user, as the customer, you know what to expect. You know what you can do in between that time. And then I also talk to my replay viewers so that they know, because I know I have a lot of them that will show up after the fact, I talk to them and explain for my replay viewers to tune in to the comments and engage with me there. Because just because I hit the end broadcast button at the end of today's show doesn't mean the conversation stops. Look at you guys. You've put on all these comments already. I'm going to go back and respond to them. And then I'm hoping others will connect with all of us. And then the car we carry on that conversation. You know, so that's how it works. And so you do want to welcome some people. You just want to make sure that you're not sitting there for five minutes welcoming everyone because that gets old and then people are leaving. So keep that in mind. Now, these are the three things that showed up the most. As you saw, we had other others on the list here. I'm sure you guys can continue adding to this list um, throughout this episode as well as even on the replay. But you want to make sure, yes, Chrissy says, the party's in the comments. Exactly. The magic happens in the comments. You know, you guys, I always say that. But these are the three things you want to start watching out for and avoiding when you go live. We're going to recap these real quick for those who are listening via audio only. And then I'm going to give you two, uh, a couple reminders too, some good practices. Hey, Stephanie, welcome. So three things that you want to avoid when going live. You want to be prepared. Have an outline. I like to choose my outline, which is one topic and up to three talking points that allows you to show up deliver your content, doesn't matter if anybody shows up or not to your broadcast, you still can do your work. 
and then engage whenever somebody does, whether it's during the live or the replay. Then, number two, you want to make sure that you don't wait for others. If you're starting at a certain time, you start, and you just keep it moving. If they show up, they show up. If they don't, they don't. It's not, not your problem. Your problem is to show up and deliver your content and engage with those who are there. Third, you want to make sure that you welcome people, but not so much that it's taking up a lot of time. Welcome a couple people and then get to the content. Now, a couple things that you can keep in mind here, we're going to lose the whiteboard for a second. I want you to keep in mind when you're going live, you want to make sure that you have good lighting. As you can see here, lighting is pretty darn good. I am in front of two windows and I have a really sweet camera, video camera or webcam that enhances that light naturally. So it, it just opens up more so it can pull in more light. That's how I have good lighting. So you want to make sure that you have good lighting. Then you also want to have decent audio. You don't have to have a super expensive uh, mic with you. You don't have to have all these crazy programs or anything. Literally, you just need a decent connection. I use my Apple earbuds just to get a little extra. Notice I don't have a ton of background noise. I mean, you kind of heard the dogs for a second with their flapping probably, but there's not a loud music like Vicky had mentioned earlier. There's not a whole lot going on in the background. The focus, your main focus is, is here and on the whiteboard when I had it up, right? So you want to make sure you think about those things when you go live. Now, I do have, just for those who are really trying to like learn more about getting started and continuing to up their Facebook Live game and really build out their own TV show. Some of you know about this, but I'm going to share it because it's been a while. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my screen. I do have this Facebook Live training. It is um, uh, about an hour, and it's a training that will cover everything from the basics to the more advanced items. I'm going to put this link in the comments for you, but this is for anybody who is trying to really learn about going live and really taking it to the next level. So I'm going to pop that in the comments for you just in case you know someone, if you want to do it, or if you know someone who needs it, um, Facebook Live training. I'm going to pop that in there because it's good for people to take a look at, and it's a, an hour of your time that will take your lives to the next level. So there's that. And that's what I have for you guys today. I hope that's helpful and that you guys learned a lot from this. Even if you're watching the replay, still keep connecting with me in the comments. I'm so happy that you guys tuned in and were able to join in the live conversation. I appreciate your time. And like I said before at the beginning of the broadcast, if you're not already on my email list, head over to edtroxel.com right after this. Jump on there. You'll get a free guide and some uh, business coaching as well as uh, connection with me each week where I send out my newsletter so you can stay in the know. Thank you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week, same time, same place here. And if you need anything, you know where to find me. Take care.